Thank you very much for the introduction, and many thanks to all of you for your attention and interest. The topic has the word fieldwork in it, so let me first give you uh, some basic context about fieldwork education. Fieldwork involves leaving the classroom and engaging in learning through first-hand experience of phenomena in outdoor settings. So an example could be students going to London Olympic Park and seeing the social, environmental, and the economic impact that has happened because of urban regeneration in that area uh, since the Olympics 2012. Another example of a field trip would be visiting a coastal area to understand erosion and to see the relationship between erosion and the geology of the area. Or you might visit an area which has had frequent flood events and investigate the effectiveness of the flood management measures in that area. Or the effects of migration on an area or investigating the transport strategy. So if you have set up some free uh, park and ride, then what has the effect of that been on traffic management? So these are various examples of field trips that you can undertake. And fieldwork has a long tradition in geography and some of the sciences like ecology, environmental sciences, biology, and so on. And there are various advantages of doing these field trips in learning and teaching for our students. They bring in environmental literacy. They bring in deeper learning because you are directly experiencing those outdoor phenomena. And it also instills social responsibility and uh, towards the preservation of biodiversity. And for educators itself, it's very useful because it gives them additional confidence and expertise when they go outdoors with, with children. But over the last decade, the field study opportunities have declined, especially in secondary schools. And there are several reasons for it, and I'll mention a few here. First of all, large class sizes. Financial resources is one of the constraints. And their profile, the, the field trips profile, has diminished in school curriculum and timetables. So even if students are going for field trips, the time that they are spending in the field is, is much less than what they used to do before. And of course, there is also lack of administrative support to organize these physical field trips. So what is happening is that educators are using technology-enhanced virtual field trips. So they are using photographs, they are using videos, they are using live expert seminars through Skype, or they are using web-based interactive experiments. And these are virtual field trips are being used as a potential replacement for physical field trips, where students aren't just going for physical field trips, or it is being done for improving the effectiveness of physical field trips. And it's also being used for inclusion. So students who can't go for physical field trips, either because of their special educational needs or because of any other constraints, then this is an effective replacement for physical field trips. So I'll show you some examples. On, and this is, these are examples of 3D virtual environments or virtual reality environments which are, used, which are being used as uh, virtual field trips. So virtual reality is where you simulate uh, a real location in a virtual environment, in a software system, and in a 3D environment. So you can see all over there. So the first one is an example in a software called Second Life. It's a software in the social, in the social software domain, just as Facebook and Twitter are. And here, users as avatars interact in this environment, and they move around in this. And this is an example of a field trip in Stonehenge. The second is an example of a virtual geology field trip that we ourselves developed at the Open University, and this is called the virtual skid door, where we have recreated six sites of the skid door mountains in the Lake District in this particular application. And then there is the 360 degree videos. For this, you can, you can run them in the browser. So a normal YouTube video is quite is flat. You only see the one part of it. But in 360 degree videos and in the Chrome browser, you can navigate left and right, up and down through the video and have the whole 360 degree perspective of, of the environment or the location that you are viewing. Or you can view these videos. If you are viewing it on a phone, then you can view it through this virtual reality viewer. This is a simple 
simplest one, but you can have those sophisticated virtual reality headsets as well, where you can just insert your phone in and you can see those in this virtual reality, uh, through the virtual reality viewer. And finally, we have this Google Expeditions app, which has been the focus of our research and which I'll be reporting today. And this has 360 degree photosphere. So these are photographs which have been stitched together to give you a 360 degree view. And now there are cameras which, which uh, record 360 degree videos as well as 360 degree photospheres. And uh, Google Expeditions is a mobile virtual reality app. And uh, it can again be viewed in, in this kind of a virtual reality viewer if you are seeing it on a mobile phone. So for the sake of completeness, although this is not our focus today, I have included a couple of slides on the SCIDDAW, the Virtual Geology Field Trip, just to give you a feel of how the resolution of the rocks is so good that our students and others are using this environment f to practice sketching skills, which is one of the key geological skills. So in these 3D environments, when you do these, when you develop these simulations, you can have quite good resolutions, and you can do many of the things that you would do in a physical field trip in this. But you can also go beyond what you can do in a physical field trip. So in this particular uh, application, you can bring up the surface of the earth and see the geology underneath. You can fly over the area like an avatar, and therefore you can get the whole perspective of the area. And it is very useful for spatial learning for a student of geography or a geology to see the entire area. And you can also pick up a rock. Normally in a physical field trip, you would pick up a rock and take it to the lab for investigating under a microscope, but we've integrated a virtual microscope within this application where you can see a rock and see the geology of the rock and the grain structure of the rock. So what I've done is I've included a video. So when this presentation goes online tomorrow on the KESS website, and if you are interested, you might like to see the videos uh, which I have included so that you can get a full perspective of what this application does. But coming back to the focus of today, which is the Google Expeditions kit. So what, it, what this kit constitutes of is a tablet. So um, you need a tablet. And this tablet will normally be with the educator. And um, she will run the Google Expeditions app. It looks something like this. So these are I'm, I'm running the app. And these are the various field trips. And you can choose. There is a very good search in it. So you can choose all the environmental field trips. Or you can choose International Space Station and so on. And there are about 700 virtual field trips in this. And then on the smartphone, you again, those are with each student has a smartphone. And so they have a smartphone as well as they have a virtual reality viewer. So whichever expedition or field trip that the educator is running, the students will see the same and they'll see it through this. And it's the lenses of this virtual reality viewer that give you the 3D effect. So otherwise, it appears very flat on the screen. But once you see it through this, you get the three-dimensional effect where you can look all, all around. And it gives you a feeling as if you're there. And then that's the app. And then you need a router. And this router is to so that the tablet and the various phones, 30, 35 in a class, they are running on the same network. So this router ensures that. So these are some examples of virtual field trips. So it's the, it's the places that you may not be able to visit or may be impossible to visit, like the Great Barrier Reef and to see the coral bleaching happening. Then we have the Borneo rainforest, the Chaibonil where the nuclear disaster took place, and then we have the International Space Station. So this is a good mix of uh, geography and science field trips, just to give you a feel of, of the kind of field trips that we've been using in our research. So there have been two objectives of our research. The first one has been that how these virtual reality field trips through the Google Expeditions app, and which is effectively a mobile virtual reality, how it can support fieldwork education. And the, especially these three phases of fieldwork education, that is preparation before you go for an outdoor field trip, during a field trip, and after a field trip. So how can Google Expeditions support this, or mobile virtual reality support this? And our focus has been on geography and science education in primary and secondary schools. And what we have done is we have been looking into the inquiry process. And that has been our second objective. Inquiry process looks like this. Whether you do investigations in a lab or in the field, how do you carry out an investigation? First of all, you need a stimulus or, a, or how
how do you raise your curiosity? And what educators normally use is they use a picture or they might use a video or they might take up a newspaper article or they might take up any website. And that is to stimulate the curiosity of the students so that they can ask questions. And when they have generated or formulated those questions, then students collect the data for it. They make sense of the data, they analyze the data, try to find the answers to the questions that they have set up, and then they reflect on their learning once they have answered all or most of these questions. So that's an inquiry process. It's called inquiry-based learning, and it's, it's used in science, geography, history, and other disciplines. And our focus has been on the first two boxes, that can mobile virtual reality create that need to know? Can it stimulate curiosity and provide that initial stimulation? And can it help in answering those kinds and in deriving questions? So this is our empirical research. What we have done is we have done two kinds of empirical research. First, we've gone on to schools where we have conducted lessons. So we have observed the lessons. Teachers have conducted the lessons using the Google Expeditions app. And then the second part of our research has been that we have done workshops, interviews, and um, with curriculum experts, with field workers, and with educators to find out how virtual reality can support fieldwork education. So coming back to the lessons in the class, so let's say the educator was showing them the Great Barrier Reef. And what we would do is, towards the end of the class, ask the students to conduct an activity. And that activity would be that what are the questions that arise in your mind after you've seen the Great Barrier Reef expedition? So that is, that is what the question was. And then our educator, with whom we were interacting with, she analyzed the, the questions that the students had um, derived. And she reported to us that the number of questions that were being generated by students were more than what they were generating if they were using other technologies, such as videos or photographs and so on. And the second thing that they reported to us was that the questions were much more analytical, evaluative, and predictive. So instead of asking a lower order question, such as how many types of coral reefs are there in the Great Barrier Reef, what students were asking was, what are the causes of the coral bleaching? So having seen a virtual field trip and having that experience of being there, the questions were much more higher order, much more analytic, predictive, and, and evaluative. And the second question, as I mentioned, was about um, our second objective of our research was to find out how mobile virtual reality supports fieldwork education. So I'll take you now to the three phases, before, during, and after, and just highlight how it supports fieldwork education. So before the fieldwork, how can virtual reality support fieldwork? So, it helps you to understand what does outdoor field work entail. It's useful for educators, for students, and even for parents to see that if students are being taken to Iceland for a physical field trip, what is this field trip going to entail? Because they can see the place, the location, or a similar location as a virtual field trip. So it helps you to familiarize. It helps you in the risk assessment. It helps in the training of the support staff who may not have been to a field work before. They can go into this virtual field trip and practice and prepare themselves. And you can also use it for comparing and contrasting locations and habitats. So if there are other similar ones in this virtual field trip set, you can use it for comparing and contrasting locations. And also virtual field trips, before you go for a field trip, help in that key engendering of the observation skills. Observation skills are key if you're going for a field trip outside, and a virtual field trip helps you to develop those observation skills. Then during a field trip, how, does, how do virtual field trips support? You can view what, is, what may not be visible to the naked eye. So if you want to look what is beyond a mountain, you may not be able to go there, but a virtual field trip provides you with that particular perspective. And this particular example is an example where an educator took her students to the local nature reserve. And she showed them the expedition or the virtual field trip of Borneo. That how in Borneo's rainforests have been affected by deforestation due to plant plantations, it how they have been affected because of construction and tourism. 
and her aim was to sensitize the students that how their local nature reserve would be affected when the high-speed railway etches to is built. And the data that we have collected and we have analyzed shows that sensitization did happen and they were able to see the effects of HS2 on their local nature reserve. So that environmental literacy, it is, it's very effective through these virtual field trips. Then you can also use them after a field trip. And this is an example where an educator did a, a, a rocks lesson. So she took students to the local cemetery to see the various rock types that were used in the local cemetery, why they were being used, how they were being used. And then she invited us in where we went in with the Google Expeditions kit. And she showed them virtual field trips of Egypt, the pyramids, Petra, and she showed them Machu Picchu and Taj Mahal. And by seeing that, students' local knowledge went on to an international context. They were able to see the various rock types being used in different locations and how different places in the world have these different kind of rocks. So you're extending students' learning from a local context to an international context. Also, after a field trip, um, if you come to a virtual field trip, you can use it for reflection and debriefing because of weather or otherwise, you may not have been able to see the entire area during a field, physical field trip, but you can come and practice it in a virtual field trip. So how is this all happening? So what is it about the virtual reality that brings in this kind of an experience as if you are there and as if you're experiencing it yourself? And these are some of the characteristics which we call the affordances of virtual reality, which bring this kind of an experience. And from the policy paper, which will be online in the next few weeks, you will find that uh, we have, there is a link in that policy paper which to a paper in which we have presented all these affordances and how we have empirically derived these affordances. But this, let me take an example for now, like the 360 degree navigation. So instead of seeing just the flat structure, you are seeing the whole place, as I said. So not just seeing the front, the left, and the right, but you're also seeing what is behind you. This 360-degree navigation helps you to give a three-dimensional view of the place. So you get the sense of being there, but it also helps towards your spatial learning. Another thing very useful is the single user handling. Because each student has their own virtual reality headset, they have much more control over their learning. Rather than just being directed by the teacher to look somewhere, they can look all over and make sense of it from their own perspective. And that gives them more control of their learning. So that's another affordance that helps towards engagement and learning and the experience. However, there are several adoption barriers, and let me start with the costs. I mean, we had the kit which had been provided to us by Google, which we took with us to conduct these lessons. But to procure these tablets, to procure the headsets and the mobile phones for each and every student, it is quite expensive to do that. Next, the training and the CPD of the educators. I mean, t educators would need some training, some continuing professional development program to be able to effectively use these expeditions because not all expeditions have a direct match with the curriculum in this particular app. So how do you match them with what you want to teach in your lesson has to be done. Parents have some health concerns as well because, and a recent report has shown that, that they have concerns about children spending too much of time in this virtual reality, and that is in fact true for every technology. But then this technology can also make you feel a bit uneasy, especially if you're viewing it continuously to this virtual reality viewer. And what we did in our lessons was that the teach educators always gave them breaks after about five or 10 minutes so that they could have some activity, then look through this virtual reality viewer so as to not, so that they don't feel that kind of uneasiness. And, um, but there are some ethical issues as well, not with Google Expeditions app per se, and the kinds of investigations that we've been doing, but there are organizations who are using 360 degree videos for fundraising. So they have a, a 360 degree video, for example, of a wanton area, where uh, how the children are being affected in that wanton area. Now, it is to sensitize people so that people donate money towards a particular campaign. But when does this sensitization become distressing? Because you almost feel you are there, because these are so realistic scenarios. Therefore, there are ethical issues of using this technology as well. 
what we have done is we have uh, looked through um, various uh, Northern Ireland Assembly reports on education, especially on primary and secondary science learning and STEM education. And I have some copies here with me just to give you an example of what we have done. We've also looked at the stats. And in our policy paper, we have given specific recommendations of how virtual reality can support science and STEM learning and, uh, and geography learning in uh, Northern Ireland. Um, and uh, I hope that you would find that policy paper useful. But for now, I, what I have done is listed some generic recommendations here that how virtual reality can support, um, can support field work and uh, learning and teaching in general. So as we've seen that virtual reality field trips can help towards field work education and as we've seen it can help both educators and students to gain that expertise and familiarization of, of field work. They can be used in environmental education. I gave you the examples of Borneo and linking it up with the local nature reserve. I gave you the example of rocks and linking up with the global, global context and therefore they help towards this environmental literacy. And other disciplines which also have field work as, as the component, again, virtual field trips could be used, like in ecology, history, and archaeology. And what educators have mentioned to us in our research is that these virtual field trips could be very effective in cross-disciplinary interactions. So different disciplines talking to one another, and that is extremely useful for students when students can link up the knowledge from different subjects. So if you have an expedition, let's say, of pyramids, you can use it in a mathematics class to understand shapes. You can use it to understand rocks in a science lesson, or you can use it in a history lesson. So the same expedition can be used in different subjects, and that helps to bring the consolidation of knowledge for students. As we've seen that these virtual field trips can be very effective for inquiry-based learning, and inquiry-based learning is, uh, improves students' questioning skills. They improve students' investigative skills, and there is evidence that they also increase the retention of the concepts by students if you use inquiry-based learning. And we've seen its application, and we've made several recommendations in our policy report on how you could do that. And what educators have said is that although our investigation has been in schools, that there is an effective role that Google expeditions and other kinds of virtual reality can play in further and higher education. And what educators have said to us is that when students come to this further and higher education, they come from very diverse backgrounds in schools. And their understanding of fieldwork education might be quite different from one another. So to arrive at that common understanding of what fieldwork is, these expeditions can help you before you take your students to a field trip to get that general understanding of what a field trip is and what does it entail. But the role of educator is paramount. As Stephen said, technology can only do something. But it is the educator's role which is, which is paramount on how they choose the expeditions, how they run these lessons using the technology, how do they match it with the curriculum and what they want to teach. And therefore, the professional development of educators is key. That is how they can integrate not only virtual reality, but other technological innovations as well. And teachers are so creative, how they can unleash their creativity through some CPD and professional development. And Educators, as we have noticed in our empirical investigations, they also need a toolkit. That is, once they are introducing a particular technology in their uh, module or in their curriculum, they need to evaluate how effective it has been for students' learning, engagement, and attainment. So they need a researcher toolkit as well. And that is also a part of the professional development. So that is our website, which gives, which we have quite an active blog. So as we've gone around conducting our research, we've been blogging about it as well, in case you'd like to access it. We've also been presenting and publishing alongside, so there is a link to our publications and presentations. That's my email address and uh, Twitter account. And this project has been 
carried out in collaboration with my colleagues at the Open University, with Field Studies Council, with Association for Science Education, uh, Geographical Association. It has been funded by Google, and Google has also been our research collaborators. What I have done is I have also got a little handout here, a poster for you to take away if you would like, which is a summary of the research that we've done. And I've also got a few papers with us, uh, a sample papers of our publications. But if you would like more information, I'd be very happy to send it out to you. Thank you very much. Thank you.